Boing. And you are listening to 94.1 KPFA and 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online at kpfa.org. The time is 1 p.m. Stay tuned next for your own health and fitness. Welcome to your own health and fitness. I'm Lena Berman. Jeff Fawcett and I come to you weekly with a critical independent voice on the politics and practice of health and the environment. Regular listeners to this program will not be surprised to learn that our medical system is in trouble. Overdiagnosis and overtreatment are rampant. The third leading cause of death in the U.S. is mistakes made while in medical care. Diagnostic, therapeutic, and public health practices are driven by the needs of the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. Alternative practitioners and practices are available, but they are made inaccessible and ineffective through active persecution by dominant medical institutions, mass media bias, as well as bias in the medical literature. The subsequent bias in medical institutions Institutions as to what constitutes the standard of care and are financially excluded by income inequality, which is also getting worse, a not unrelated phenomenon, and medical insurance practices that reinforce those biases, lack of access and ineffectiveness, which will get worse should a single payer system be created because those biased institutional arrangements will control even more tightly than now what practices will and will not be financially supported. That's why we at Your Own Health and Fitness not only bring you these alternative voices, but also bring you resources that will help you find your way over, under, around, and through all of those barriers to staying well and getting well. That's what we're doing today, talking about sustainable medicine. My guest today is Dr. Sarah Myhill. She is a physician in England and author, most recently, of Sustainable Medicine, Whistleblowing on 21st Century Medical Practice. Sarah, welcome to your own health and fitness. Thank you, Jeffrey. I think you summed up the situation gloriously well. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. We've we've had a lot of practice on this program. (laughs) So at uh, at the opening of your book, Sustainable Medicine, You tell us that you sometimes make the notation PMITD in your notes for a patient. So I have, I have three, a three part question. What does the acronym PMITD stand for? Uh, What's an example of, of that phenomenon? And how does it lead us to the idea of sustainable medicine that you advocate? (laughs) <laughs> well, this is an acronym that I learned from actually one of my veterinary friends. And that acronym stands for patient more intelligent than doctor. <laughs> and what that means is, is that patient is asking the right questions. Because doctors no longer ask the question, why? You know, what's the underlying mechanism that underpins um, the disease process or the symptoms that this patient is experiencing? Um, they're simply interested in symptom suppression with drugs. Funnily enough, I had a patient who came to see me today. She said, oh, I've been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. Well, irritable bowel syndrome is not a diagnosis. It's a symptom. It's like chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome is not a diagnosis. It's a clinical picture. It's a symptom. It- which may have many causes. So sustainable medicine is all about asking what is the root cause of what's going on. And the shameful thing is that patient who came to see me today with irritable bowel syndrome, not a single doctor had asked her what was she eating, what was her diet. Good grief. It's 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 astonishing. And ecological doctors, that's what we call ourselves, ecological doctors... Um, um, you know, we know that with irritable bowel syndrome, there are two common causes. One is allergy, allergy to gluten grains, allergy to dairy products, and the other is what I call fermenting gut. 
And I'm seeing epidemics of people who have a fermenting gut. Why? Because we have been subject to decades of very poor nutritional advice that says we should be fueling our body with sugars and carbohydrates. And guess what? They overwhelm the gut's ability to digest them and they get fermented instead. So fermenting, so guess what? We spoke an awful lot about allergy and we spoke an awful lot about fermenting gut. But um, as you beautifully summarized, um, sustainable medicine is all about asking the question, why? And that is for both, well, in particular, for uh, the patient. Uh, we consumers or uh, civilians, as I sometimes refer to us out here, uh, that, those are the, that, is, that summarizes, um, for me, what sustainable medicine is about, of being able to ask that question, why? One thing I would like to, uh, I, I, uh, we we discussed um, before we started recording this interview was your previous book was titled Diagnosis and Treatment of Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. Now, yeah. that is a very complex condition. Uh, and so I am w- wondering uh, how the development of your thinking on that issue affected your or informed the development your, of your ideas around sustainable medicine. Okay, okay. Well, I started off in uh, National Health Service uh, general practice in 1982. And um, um, it became very clear very early on, because I was interested in diagnosis, that um, we were not um, giving patients answers to questions. But the condition that I saw more often than everything else was people came in saying they're tired. You know, they're fatigued. In fact, there's a there's a terrible acronym that us doctors or, or doctors usually call T A T T tired all the time. And um, um, so I started becoming interested in what was the underlying mechanism by which those patients were becoming fatigued. And in the early days, I was interested in allergy. And we know many patients become fatigued for that reason. But now my ideas have moved on moved on much more than that. Now. Um, there's a, an author in this country called Charles Dickens, who you may have heard of. And one, of his, one of his quotes comes from Mr. Micawber, which is about money. And it says, income, 20 shillings, outgoing, 21 shillings, result, misery. You know, income, 20 shillings, outgoing, 19 shillings, result, happiness. And it's exactly the same with fatigue. We have to look at energy generating mechanisms, i.e. how we can make money. And then energy expenditure, i.e. how are we spending that money? Another very useful analogy I use with respect to making money or making energy is the car analogy. And I see four key players with respect to energy generating mechanisms. First of all, there's the fuel in the tank. And if I put you know, petrol in my diesel car, guess what? It doesn't go. The evolutionary correct fuel or the evolutionary correct diet is the paleo-ketogenic diet, uh, i.e. no um, modern allergens like gluten grains, dairy, yeast, and very low in carbohydrate, i.e. ketogenic. Secondly, we have to look at the the engine of our car, which are mitochondria. And I've written three um, scientific papers in this area looking at mitochondrial issues in patients who have chronic fatigue. And what we see from those papers is that those patients with the worst levels of energy have the worst mitochondrial function. And I've been doing this for, oh gosh, over 15 years with respect to mitochondria. And we now know there's a packet of supplements that works reliably well to improve mitochondrial function together with relevant detox techniques. So that's the the fuel and the engine. And then to control that engine, you need a thyroid accelerator pedal and you need an adrenal gearbox. Now, it's so important that the the body carefully matches energy demand with energy delivery. And you can see this from an evolutionary perspective. You know, if um, uh, we went through um, uh, our winter burning energy that um, we didn't uh, need, we would rapidly not survive, we'd run out of fuel, we'd starve to death, we wouldn't survive the winter. 
Conversely, you know, if a saber-toothed tiger jumps out of it, then we have to spend massive amounts of energy in order to sprint away from it as fast as we possibly can. And those two um, um, uh, issues are dealt with by the combined effect of the thyroid accelerator pedal and the adrenal gearbox. So those are the four um, um, mechanisms that are vital with respect to energy delivery mechanisms. Now, I summarize all this in, it's in my book, um, Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, is mitochondria, not hypochondria. But the sum total of all those energy delivery mechanisms is the core temperature. And I have to say, I found this an incredibly useful tool for looking at people's energy delivery mechanisms. Why? Because they can do it themselves. They don't need an expensive doctor in England to um, measure their temperature or interpret the results. Um, all the information I put um, on my website, and I describe it as conducting an orchestra. So getting people well from chronic fatigue syndrome um, is, is to say, it's like, uh, as I say, conducting an orchestra. You've got to have all the instruments playing. They've got to be playing the right tune. Um, they've got to be playing um, in um, uh, at the right speed, uh, at the right amplitude. And then you get a great melody from the orchestra. Um, so some people come to me and say, oh, I've tried the dart. Oh, that didn't do any good. So guess what? You know, never mind. We'll try something else. Oh, I've tried the package supplements of mitochondria. Oh, that didn't do any good. So never mind. You've got to do it all. And um, measuring core temperature is a very helpful way of balancing that all up. So if I have got a patient with a fatigue syndrome and I have addressed all the energy delivery mechanisms, we then have to look at how that body is spending energy. And we all know that many chronic fatigue syndromes are triggered by infection. Post-viral chronic fatigue, typically, typically Epstein-Barr virus, maybe chronic infections such as Lyme disease or mycoplasma. And so we, and, and if, if the immune system is busy dealing with that infection, then A, that causes symptoms of inflammation. So anybody who has um, inflammatory symptoms um, and inflammation, of course, is characterized by heat, swelling, pain, um, uh, loss of function, redness, if it's in the skin, you can see it. Um, um, and that, I'd say, is often infection driven. So if there's, an, as I call it, an immunological hole in the energy bucket because that immune system is trying to deal with Lyme disease, it's trying to deal with um, Epstein-Barr virus, it's trying to deal with mycoplasma or whatever, then we have to look at that inflammatory hole. So the key point to recognize here is that chronic fatigue syndrome is not a diagnosis, it's a symptom. And by addressing all those causes with respect to energy delivery mechanisms and how we spend energy, then you have a chance of analyzing the problem and giving the patient the necessary tools so that they can help themselves. So I want to comment here for people who are listening that um, what what Sarah is discussing right now is also uh, contained in Sustainable Medicine, the, the, the book we're actually discussing today, uh, although it is discussed, chronic fatigue, as uh, she has studied it, is dealt with in greater detail in the book, Diagnosis and Treatment of Chronic Fatigue. But what she has just discussed is incorporated, is a, is a, a significant feature of of the discussion in sustainable medicine, which is about informing you so that you, listener, have the capability of asking of any health practitioner why. In fact, asking your environment why and focusing on symptoms as signs, which leads me to um, uh, a very interesting observation that you make. You have a a section in the book uh, fairly early on that's titled Symptoms Are Desirable and Therapeutic. And you note two symptoms in particular that you describe as essential to protecting us from ourselves. And those two symptoms are pain and fatigue. So <laughs> so the, the, the first question that I have is... Please explain why symptoms are desirable and therapeutic. Okay, let's talk about fatigue first. If we didn't have the symptom of fatigue, we would work all day and we would play all day, all night, all day, all night, and nobody would live more than 11 days. Why? Because without sleep, 
um, um, we would die. Sleep is an absolute essential for life. And I probably spend as much time talking about sleep as I spend talking about diet. Yes, I, 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 I noted that in the book, and it's, it's, I find it quite significant. <laughs> it's, it's hugely significant. In fact, there's a lovely book um, I've read recently called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, and I can't recommend that enough to anybody who's listening in. Um, and he's a sleep scientist who um, um, started off life in, in Liverpool, in England, and then moved out to um, USA to do research. And what he has shown is that there are... Sleep, first of all, sleep is an absolute necessity for life. We have a sleep cycle uh, every 90 minutes throughout the 24 hours. And, um, of course, we sleep at night and we're awake by day. But during the day, the desire, the pressure, the sleep pressure, as he describes it, builds up so that we do sleep at night. And during that 90 minutes, um, we have two types of sleep, essentially. We have um, non-REM sleep, which means uh, when we don't have rapid eye movement sleep, and it's believed that that's when uh, memory is consolidated. And then we have a little bit of REM sleep, which is when the brain makes all sorts of connections uh, throughout. We dream, and that is thought to be when we problem solve. And what's so interesting about REM sleep and non-REM sleep is we get more non-REM sleep at the beginning of the night, and more REM sleep towards the end of the night. Now, what he doesn't address in that book is why it is that we get more uh, of the non-REM sleep early on and or uh, and less later on, or indeed the mechanism that. And I think that has to do with thyroid and adrenal hormones because their levels change so much throughout the night. And so many of my patients have commented to me that when they get their thyroid hormones right, and when they get the adrenal hormones uh, bounced up, their sleep is, is, is enormously improved. Anyway, I've digressed. But the point is, if we didn't have the symptom of fatigue, we would never live. We would die because we would never stop. We would never rest. We would never sleep. I'm going, to, thing- I'm going to need to pause here to identify our show. Uh, you're listening to Your Own Health and Fitness. I'm Jeffrey Fawcett. I'm talking today with Dr. Sarah Myhill about her book, Sustainable Medicine. So please continue. Okay, you, the, now the second symptom that is very common is the symptom of pain. Now, again, the thing about pain is it protects us for, from ourselves. And the best example I can draw here is of, of people who suffer from leprosy. Now, leprosy is a mycobacteria, a little bit like tuberculosis, and it destroys the nerves. And so sufferers lose sensation in their hands and their feet. And as a result of losing sensation there, um, they don't mind if they knock their hands. They don't mind if they burn their hands. They don't mind if they, don't mind if they damage themselves because they just don't notice. And they literally knock off, lose through infection, break, damage, injure their arms and their legs so much that they will lose a hand or they will lose a foot. And, um, uh, and they can cause, they can have devastating effects. Um, let's give another example. Just imagine if you had um, if you had no sensation of pain and you broke a leg. Well, of course, breaking a leg is extremely painful. Normally, one would you know immobilise the leg, hold it still. The slightest disturbance would cause excruciating pain. But if you don't do that because you have no pain, then you can continue to use it as normal. And guess what? You get a devastating infection, or the leg would would, would fail to heal, and it would fall off, or whatever. So pain is a really important symptom. It gives us clues about things that are wrong. It makes us think, you know, what should we do to avoid this? Now, there might be something obvious like a fracture or an injury, but it might be something less obvious like an allergy. Allergy often presents with headache, arthritis, um, gut pain or whatever. Fatigue. So, a big pardon? Fatigue. Al- allergy. Uh, well, which I just note myself that fatigue is a very common effect on me of an allergic reaction. Absolutely. I mean, they are the two big things that we see in, 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 in general practice, fatigue and pain. But to ignore those symptoms um, is to do so at your peril. But that's what the doctors do routinely. You know, if somebody comes with arthritis, what do they give them? Oh, an anti-inflammatory, i.e. mask the pain. Now, that's a very dangerous thing to do because pain is there to give the, A, to make you think what's causing it, and B, to rest that limb, um, to give a chance for healing and repair to take place. 
um, 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 and, for, and, and the same with fatigue. I mean, I, I heard recently of a, of a doctor who was dishing out amphetamine tablets to a mask the symptom of fatigue. But it's disaster. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing to do. And in fact, this brings me on to another subject, which again, I talk about more than all other subjects put together, which is the symptom of addiction, which is addiction. Yes. Now, um, it's it's a uh, uh, you know uh, there are very obvious addictions such as um, you know um, cocaine or heroin or whatever, and I think what addi- those addi- what addictions do is they mask those very unpleasant symptoms that we experience. So, for example, I suspect that the symptom of stress feeling stressed or maybe anxiety or depression is the symptom we experience when the brain knows it doesn't have the energy to deal with demands. And so what alcohol does, what cocaine does, what you know, um, uh, amphetamines do is they mask that symptom. They say to the body, do you know what? You can, you can spend whatever energy you like because you've got it all. But that's actually a very dangerous thing because if your body runs out of energy, you're dead. You know, it's you know, it's not like a bank where you can go and borrow energy from somewhere else. You can't borrow energy if you haven't got it. The heart does not have the energy to beat. The brain does not have the energy to function, and you die. So we have these early warning symptoms of maybe anxiety, maybe depression, maybe stress, uh, maybe fatigued, so that we always stay in a positive energy balance because the body cannot afford to go into ne- a negative energy balance. That's death. And therefore, the symptoms my chronic fatigue syndrome patients have are overpoweringly severe and and painful and agonizing and stressful because that stops them from dying. <laughs> it sounds a, a, a drastic thing to say, but um, uh, that's the that is the fact of the matter. Um. Well, I start my, my mind started going in a, a, a direction that I don't want to get sidetracked. Uh, so I'm going to move on to ask you about uh, the tools that you describe in the book that uh, and and how to use those tools uh, based on symptoms to get to root causes. And you have. Uh, uh, kind of two basic groups. One group, one uh, toolbox you call the basic package, and yes. another set which you call bolt-on extras. So, um, uh, what is the basic package, and okay. for what is it designed? Okay, the basic package is the starting point to treat absolutely everything. And, and and that absolutely everything includes slowing the aging process and living to one's full potential. And of course, if ever I have a question, I always ask nature. I always ask evolution because we evolved to be um, fit, busy, active um, individuals. Without which, you know, we wouldn't have survived. So the basic package really reflects. Uh, what nature intended for us. And humans evolved over hundreds of thousands of years eating a paleo ketogenic diet. And that is the starting point of treating absolutely everything. I mean, just to give you an example, um, I'm sure you um, have um, seen work by um, a guy called Dale Bredesen, a uh, consultant neurologist from California, who reversed Alzheimer's disease yes. with a paleo ketogenic diet. Right. Well, in um, fact, so- I, I, in fact, interviewed. Um- Amy Berger, who wrote a book, uh, Alzheimer's something, it's one of those alliterative titles, but uh, in which she, uh, she uses his, discusses his work. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, as I say, it doesn't matter if somebody comes to you with established disease or they come because they just want to be well or because they're an athlete who wants to maximize their potential, i.e. they want to win a gold medal and not be an also ran. And the starting point is the paleo ketogenic diet. The next thing I have to we have to think about are micronutrients because we have a major problem with modern agriculture. Yes. There is one yeah, there's a one well, you know this. There's a one way movement of minerals from the soil to plants to animals to us and we throw it away. So we're not recycling minerals back onto the soil. And as a result, um, you know, our, our soils and these are US Department of Agricultural figures used to have about five hundred parts per million of essential minerals. Now that's less than fifty parts per million. Yes. 
Okay. Um, so um, everybody should have a basic package of nutritional supplements, you know, good multivitamin, good multimineral, and some essential fatty acids. Uh, and then sleep, of course, that we've talked about. You know, sleep is one of those subjects, it's non-negotiable. Um, you know, people say, oh, but, 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 no, 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 you've got to sleep. You've got to get the hours of sleep. It's got to be the um, um, uh, uh, average should be at least, eight, at least eight to nine hours of good quality sleep every night. And again, I talk an awful lot about that. Yeah. Um, and then again, of course, uh, um, freedom from toxic stress. We live in such a poisonous um, uh, environment these days. And um, a very useful test that I do is a fat biopsy, uh, which measures levels of persistent organic pollutants in fats. And do you know what? I have never seen a normal test. And everybody is carrying a toxic burden of, of pollutants. I uh, think that, yeah, I think I think that's really critical for people to hear that. Uh, I remember uh, it was probably 10 years ago as an organization here in California called the Environmental Working Group. That they did a survey of um, the toxic uh, uh, body, what they call a body burden study, and they included a, a number of people in different environments, and including people who lived rurally, uh, were very careful about their diets, uh, about uh, their own practices, and they discovered all sorts of stuff and in, including ddt in in, oh, yes. in their systems and uh, now the cdc the uh, centers for disease control in the united states public health organization uh has a kind of routine survey that they do not as good as the environmental working groups but they routinely find in the mo- uh, most unlikely of places uh just pervasive um Effect and in fact, the FDA just recently released a study that showed that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, uh, the you know most most widely used pesticide in the yep, world, yep. Uh, is everywhere. Uh, yeah. is every, uh, virtually everywhere. So that's an extremely important um, aspect to this. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely unavoidable. Uh, unavoidable. You know, w- w- however clean you may be living, uh, you will be poisoned. And um, my view is that we should all be doing uh, some sort of heating regime once a week. Now, I've collected figures from about all oh, 35 patients. That doesn't sound a lot, I know, but I've got figures um, of fat biopsies or some sort of test of toxicity before and after mm-hmm. heating regime. Now, by heating re- regimes, I mean, anything gets you hot. It might be sunbathing. It might be exercise if you've got the energy to do it. It might be saunering. Uh, it might be Turkish bath. It doesn't matter. But the point is, is that when you get hot, you literally boil off these pollutants from the subcutaneous fat onto the lipid layer on the surface of the skin. And then you wash, uh, you shower, and that can be washed off. And my rough rule of thumb is that 50 such um, uh, regimes will halve your toxic load. Interesting. Uh, and of course, so you never get rid of them completely. The, 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 it comes down exponentially. So 50 will halve it, 50 will bring it to a quarter, another 50 will bring it to an eighth, yeah, yeah. and you keep going until you end up with some sort of equilibrium. So you never get rid of them. So, the, But the best we can do is to keep it them as as low as level as we reasonably can. Yeah, so we're uh, running out of, of time here, and I would like to get through the basic package before we have to take a break. So uh, please continue with what comes next in the basic package. Um, well, uh, you know, uh, I, I consider sunshine to be an absolute essential. Yes. Um, you know, bright light is just so important. And I'm looking for somebody to make a sunshine machine because sunshine has so many benefits. You know, yes, it has ultraviolet, um, which allows us to, um, which is, is very good at, uh, first of all, it's very good at killing microbes. It's very good at keeping us free of infection. Um, and it's also a very good source of vitamin D. And guess what? We're all vitamin D deficient because humans evolved um, running naked under the African sunshine. 
And um, without um, um, a good sunshine, we will be deficient. And guess what? We all live indoors. You know, where I live here, it's far too cold to, for me to sit out in a bikini every day. Um, so we should all be taking a vitamin D supplement. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, bright light, we know it's good for our mood. Everybody feels better when on, on a sunny day. And it has profound effects on, on brain neurotransmitters. And of course, if you get nice bright light by day, then you're going to sleep better by night. So, um, uh, you know, that contrast is vital. And it's darkness that stimulates melatonin production. And, of course, melatonin is the um, hormone that says, yep, and now it is time to sleep. And part of the chronic sleep deprivation that many people suffer from is because, you know, we like to watch the television in the evening. We like to sit in 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 an electrically um, lit uh, area. And that switches off melatonin production. And interestingly, modern man has a biological clock which is about 24, 25 hours. It's, it's running mm. later and later and later all the time. Now, Primitive Man, he also had a, a clock, but it wasn't a 25 hour clock. It's more like 24 hours plus about 15 minutes. So, you know, we are constantly running later and later and later. And we have to make a, a very positive effort to get to bed on time as we age, maybe take extra melatonin and be disciplined about our hours because. Um, electricity gets in the way <laughs> and then of course I call there's what I call the emotional hold in the in the energy bucket you know we are human beings evolved to be sociable creatures and um, we all need to love somebody and we all need to be loved by somebody in fact there's a fast, some fascinating papers that come out recently looking at painkillers because many painkillers are anti-inflammatory. Well, most painkillers are anti-inflammatory. But they also have a profound effect on our mood as well. And they stop us caring. They make us less empathetic, if you like. Um, um, so they blunt our emotions. And maybe they's, they are also contributing to our epidemics of, of psychiatric disease that we're seeing at the moment. Things like you know, anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, psychosis, and so on. There's a there's an eighth item on the list, yes. Oh gosh, what's that? I've forgotten that. Tell me. Uh, I don't have. I did actually have it written out, but don't worry about it. But we'll do that. What we're going to what we're going to do right now is um, I'm going to get back into the flow of things. Uh, we need to take a brief musical break. Uh, you're listening to your own health and fitness. I'm Jeffrey Fawcett. Uh, when I come back, I'll continue talking with Dr. Sarah Miles about. Sarah Miles, God, uh, doctor, a very fine actress, but not who I'm talking to today. Dr. Sarah Myhill about her book, Sustainable Medicine, Whistleblowing on 21st Century Medical Practice. Stay tuned. You're in the right place. your own health and fitness. I'm Jeffrey Fawcett. I'm talking today with Dr. Sarah Myhill about her book, Sustainable Medicine. Our website, yourownhealthandfitness.org, has more information about this show, as well as our almost 700 other shows, a free download of today's show, free open access to recordings of all our shows, including this one, a free newsletter about upcoming shows, and more. To contact us, email us at admin at your own health and fitness.org sarah how can listeners learn more about your work well obviously my try chance would be say read the books <laughs> well in addition to reading the book the books <laughs> uh, i have i have a website um um uh, sarah my um dot my uk where the information is there it's free uh, and anybody can access that and um uh, i put up there and all the um, um, rules of the game. As I say, as I'm trying, when I'm trying to treat somebody these days, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give them the rules of the game. I this is how you do it, together with, as I call it, the tools of the trade. And those tools of the trade are not 
just for doctors. You know, I'm trying, I'm developed, I'm developing tools that anybody can use. Diet, vitamin C, exercise regimes, detox regimes, you know, nutritional supplements, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because, you know, I've only just woken up to the fact that I can't um, treat the whole world on my own. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, my, I, I would I would guess that would be a problem. <laughs> you might call me a slow learner, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I want to be I want to give my patients and, and, and everybody out there say the information that I would like to have if I had those problems, um, and and by making it personal, um, of course um, that makes one address the question very thoroughly. And of course, you know, I'm getting old. I'm I'll be 60 this year, and the tools of the trade uh, that are applicable to any disease are also applicable to improving longevity. So guess what? I do all the things that I'm asking my patients to do. I do a paleo ketogenic diet. I take nutritional supplements. I do detox regimes. I exercise. I'm disciplined about sleep in order that I can function to my full potential for as long as is possible. Why? Because I'm enjoying myself. I'm having fun. And that's what life is all about. So um, on the website and in the books um, uh, are the rules of the game. And increasingly, I'm trying to include tools of the trade that don't need doctor input, i.e. you can do it yourself. Um, and there might be very simple t- tools, like I say, nutritional supplements, vitamin C, um, to bowel tolerance, which I use a lot of, herbal remedies, heat, light, exercise, and so on and so forth. So you have to... We have we have a we seem to have a tradition in this country whereby you know, people treat doctors like gods and <laughs> and they kowtow to them and and, and do everything they do. That's no good at all. You've got just like your your finance, just like every other aspect of your life, you've got to take control yourself because if you don't, you won't get good advice elsewhere. Sort it out yourself. That's why I tell all my patients: stand on your own two feet, do it yourself. It's perfectly possible. Bravo! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the more the more folks hear that, the better, and 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 providing resources uh, for them to do that intelligently. And one of the uh, I wanted to continue with the the tools that you discuss because you not only have the basic package which we talked talked about before the break, but you also talk about bolt on extras, and there's lots of those in your book, but. Um, give us some idea of what bolt-on extras do and the kinds of things that you're talking about and what a bolt-on extra is. Okay, okay. Well, of course, um, not the overwhelming majority of patients who come to consult me with me don't come to consult with me because they're well. They come to consult with me because they're ill. And what that means is they haven't been doing the basic package for an awful long time and therefore they have got into trouble. Uh, So they might present with diabetes or cancer or chronic fatigue syndrome or dementia or whatever. And what that means is sometimes just the basic package of treatment isn't sufficient to, um, to allow them to heal and repair. Now, a, a subject I find myself talking about a huge amount is what I call the fermenting gut. Now, unfortunately, we've been, as I said earlier, we've been subject to very poor nutritional advice that says we should be eating lots of sugars and carbohydrates because they're the good foods. Rubbish. Nature intended us to um, live on fat, or rather, they intend to power our body with fat and fiber as our fuel. Now, one of the problems of eating lots of sugars and carbohydrates is one overwhelms the ability of the gut to deal with those and those foods get fermented instead. Now, the fermenting gut drives many pathological processes for several reasons. First of all, when you ferment, um, you start to produce um, um, products of fermentation such as alcohol, D-lactate, hydrogen sulfide, all of which can cause foggy brain, all of which can drive a chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, uh, that's the first point. The second point is that minerals such as magnesium, zinc, copper, chromium, selenium, and so on are malabsorbed because any that appear in the diet are, being, are feeding fermenting microbes instead of fermenting, um, feeding the human body. But the third, and I suspect the biggest problem, is the issue of um, what we call bacterial translocation. The point is those microbes in the gut um, uh, can very easily get into the bloodstream. 
Now, we're taught at medical school that that doesn't happen. Not true. If you have a fermenting gut, you have those microbes in the bloodstream, which might be bacteria, and they might be yeast, and they may, they may be other microbes. There's been some lovely work in Japan done by a, a researcher called Nishihara, who's shown that if you've got fermenting microbes in the gut, you've got fermenting microbes in the brain. You've been listening to an interview on your own health and fitness that Jeffrey did, Jeff Fawcett did with uh, Dr. Sarah Mayhill, Myhill, 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 M-Y-H-I-L-L. Uh, her book is called Sustainable Medicine, and the subtitle is Whistleblowing on the 21st Century Medical Practice. And indeed, it's uh, it was a thrill for me to hear her and to look at her book because it's so closely... Uh, it's so closely in line with my own work over the last 25, 30 years with people and, and on the radio for 20, 20, 23 years now. Um, so we have copies of her book as a thank you gift today. This is if you if you can join us at $100 or more uh, at kpfa.org for a donation, or you can call, if you prefer, 1-800-439-5732. Um, this is, I, I like her very much. I like her, uh, her joie de vivre, uh, her, um, her practical and direct uh, experience and way of explaining how to to care for yourself and how important it is for you to care for yourself since that's why I started the show in the first place and what Jeffrey and I have been trying to teach. So, so would really be helpful if you guys donated during this hour, kpfa.org or 1-800-439-5732. Any amount uh, is helpful. It's always... You know, these fund drives are really difficult. It's always really difficult to gauge what people are going to be up for and what they're going to want. And uh, people do like thank you gifts. Uh, there are other thank you gifts online at kpfa.org if you prefer something different. Uh, you can join at any level and you can also donate at any level. But we're looking for um, probably something like, oh, 15 to 20 people to donate at $100 today. We really need to bring up our pledge amounts and our and our donations for this hour for your own health and fitness let me put it to you this way so again it's a hundred bucks sustainable medicine kpfa.org what happens when a community of people with different abilities and ideas all have a unique piece of the puzzle and they get together to change the world this was these were experiments that went on in the 60s I was very young. I was born in, in 49. I'm the same age as the station. And I got to watch what happens when people feel responsible for the world. I mean, deeply, deeply responsible for the world. And I can assure you that the people who are on the air on KPFA are a corral full of characters with different approaches and different ideas who all feel deeply responsible for the world and want to continue this mission of changing the world one person at a time and your participation in this is critical. So if you feel it, if you feel the tenderness of the world, the beauty of the world, the, um, the, the sense of wonder and awe that you feel when you see people get together, roll up their sleeves and do the good work of loving this earth. If you appreciate those kinds of efforts, this station well, there will never be another one like this. This is like every individual life is an experiment. This station is an experiment. No other station has been able to be as large and as thoroughly uh, only listener listener supported and and uh, listener donating support donator supported so this is a very unique experiment and it depends very very much on your participation kpfa.org a hundred dollars or more get you a copy of this wonderful book sustainable medicine by dr sarah myhill i i think it's it, it, it's a terrific book it's a terrific interview um or 1-800-439- 5732 but please do donate or pledge now we really do need your support we need you to be part of this community this very experimental community let's not let kpfa go let's not let it go 
One of the really profound things that this book covers, although it, 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 she, she does it in such a way that it seems obvious, but it takes something to learn. She starts off by saying that one of the whistles, one of the things about the whistleblowing on 21st century medical practice, conventional medical practice, is that it treats symptoms not root causes. And that's what KPFA does. It does not talk about symptoms. I mean, it does talk about symptoms, but it tries constantly to go to the root causes. We see, we experience, we suffer what we do uh, as as progressives, as leftists. Yeah, leftists. I'm actually not a progressive. No, I'm, I'm a leftist. Left, I'm, yeah. I'm a leftist. Yeah. Um, I'm too old to be a progressive or not old enough or something. But 800-439-5732, kpfa.org. Uh, sustainable medicine is a thank you gift for one hundred dollars or more. We will be more than happy to send you a copy of it to add to your library to help you live a better life. And your donation will generally help us all live a better life because it will keep KPFA in our lives. And these days, these uh, increasingly darkening days, we have to keep our focus and our energy on that, on keeping institutions like, well, I don't know, I think it's kind of an insult to call KPFA an institution, a, an experiment. Lena's words right, is right. An experiment, this ongoing experiment to keep it alive so that we can keep ourselves alive, keep the planet alive. 800 439 5732, a pledge of $100. We will be thrilled to send you a copy of Sustainable Medicine by Dr. Sarah Myhill or to donate directly at kpfa.org. Uh, we really encourage you to uh, participate here, to go past the symptoms, to learn as much as you can about the root causes of what you are seeing, both in the news and in in your personal life as well. This isn't this isn't just about uh, the the latest outrage or the latest horror story. It, it's about getting to what will really make our lives and your life better. How do you how do you save the world? How do you save the world? Fifty years ago in 1968, a lot of a lot of there's a lot of energy put, being put in right now to celebrate 50 years since 1968. It's the year after I graduated high school. 67 was the summer of love. I remember all the movements that were going on. It was unlike anything we've seen maybe since the 1920s or something or, or even since the Russian Revolution in 1917 that there was so much energy toward far left politics, toward experimental lifestyles, toward inclusiveness not leaving anybody behind, having everybody be included, having having all sorts of ideas, having this messy, really messy sort of business of of trying to include everyone's ideas, trying to have some leadership without trouncing on people. In the same way, this book, Sustainable Medicine, is particularly designed, as the show is, Your Own Health and Fitness, to get you in the center of your control of your own individual experience of your life and this experiment of KPFA is fragile and it's more fragile than ever before because it unlike 1968 there is very little support for experimental uh, world changing communities you're part of this community if you listen to this radio show and you're not donating I don't mean to guilt trip you but I need to let you know that everybody needs to throw in something into the pot to make this work it's the only way it works 1-800-439-5732 KPFA kpfa.org a hundred dollars or more you can support people who cannot afford to spend the money and yet still get to listen to kpfa for free won't you send us a thousand dollars we certainly deserve to have a thousand dollars toward kpfa and to inspire uh people to learn how to take care of their lives and their health health to to teach principles instead of uh being hierarchical and telling people what to do kpfa is this messy business of 
of all these different ideas, but there's something for everyone on KPFA, and some of this is for you, and we're for you, but we need you to support the station. Desperately, we do desperately need it. Otherwise, this experiment may not continue. We all know how fragile it is. $100 or more, $1,000 would be amazing, $500, anything you can afford. If it's only $25 or $5, any amount of money, kpfa.org, if you can get online, donate directly, or 1-800-439-5732. dollars or more gets you sustainable health by Dr. Sarah Myhill. Sustainable medicine. Sustainable medicine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I'll tell you what happened to me in 1968 and why KPFA was such an important part of 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 a, a transformation because it is continually transforming people's lives. Um, I started listening to KPFA coming from a background of very deep um, but old-fashioned conservatism. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, when I was defending the Vietnam War to him, said, do you know what napalm does to people? And I went and found out, and KPFA was part of that education for me. 800-439-5732, kpfa.org. $100 or more will get you a gift of sustainable medicine, whistleblowing on 21st century medical practice. And we want you to help us continue that educational process of helping people understand in the same way that this book will help you understand the difference between symptoms and causes that we have to get to, uh, to to really make this world a better place. We have to get to what's at the bottom of what we see going wrong. And what's going wrong is kind of obvious, but it takes that friend to say, do you really know how this happens? Do you understand what the consequences are? And KPFA is that friend. And we are asking you today to contribute whatever you can to that cause, to that educational process. 800-439-5732, kpfa.org, $100, sustainable medicine, whistleblowing on 21st century medical practice. We really do need, I'm not making this up, we really do need 15 to 20 people pledging at $100. Um, we need to show uh, that we can support KPFA in order to to be blessed and honored with a slot on the station. How, how rare and and special it is to be allowed to broadcast on KPFA. So many of us are volunteers. What is it, like 80% of the station? And yet still, only one out of eight people uh, donates to the station. And I know people are strapped for money, but what happens when people feel responsible for the earth, for the world, for this culture, for changing the world? Do you feel responsible? Do you feel the cries of the world? Do you hear them? And I know how this can break you down, and I know how it can feel impossible and uh, bleak and hopeless, but it isn't because KPFA is a community of people with different abilities, different unique pieces of the puzzle, who got together and are together trying to change the world. What happens when you feel responsible? Please feel responsible. Give as much as you can during this hour. We really do need the support. It's extremely important. And again, because this hour is a unique opportunity for us to be with you and how precious it is to us to be able to do this and be allowed to do it, we need the support to keep going. A hundred dollars or more gets you a thank you gift of sustainable medicine. Any amount, uh, donated at kpfa.org. But please, if you would, we're not doing match grants on this show. Uh, we just rely on people to donate. So we do need some pushes. We need a, a person to donate a thousand dollars, to donate five hundred dollars. We need those types of donations to get us over the top during this hour. We've only got a few minutes left. I'm really asking from the bottom of my heart, after 23 years on this air, on KPFA, such an honor to be here. I really need you to join me as another part of this community who feels responsible, knowing that if you can give $1,000, then you're going to be giving for people who can't afford to, who we still need to hear the show. We still 
feel responsible for those people. Nobody falls through the cracks. That's the stuff we learned in 1968 and in the 20s, and we need it again now. We need to continue this powerful movement of people feeling responsible for the world and giving whatever they can. A hundred dollars or more at kpfa.org, a thousand if you can afford it, any amount at all pledged to 1-800-439-5732. Know that we need to carry our weight here in this hour and we need that to come from you because there's nobody else besides us as volunteers and the 80% of the other people who volunteer at KPFA who work for free and work hard for free because of that weight of responsibility that they feel. We're the people and you're part of the people who can change the world and it changes people to give them new and different ideas. If you don't like something you hear on KPFA, if you wait an hour, you'll hear something you do like. There's such a variety of different shows and different approaches. All people who feel this weight of responsibility, all people who have good ideas and bring on people who could never in a million years be heard, even on NPR, who is trying harder than they used to. But still, if you're being supported by Archer Daniel Midland and uh, all these other horror shows and all the telecom companies, how can you really be doing the hard work of changing the world? It has to be done by people who come together without getting what they need for themselves. They have to come together feeling a sense of responsibility for everybody else and not trying to get something for themselves. But that only happens by you donating 1-800-439-5732 kpfa.org $100 for a thank you gift. Don't have to give you a thank you gift where you can just give you KPFA 24-7. This incredible community of people who are carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders please donate a thousand dollars if you can afford it 500 if you can't 200 if you can't 25 dollars whatever you can please don't don't wait uh until it's too late because it can be it really can be 1-800-439-5732 kpfa.org $100 $100 for Sustainable Medicine. Excellent book. Wonderful woman. Uh, please, please support the work. Please, please feel responsible. One of the things that's very interesting about this book is she sets up uh, a couple of ideas, kind of basic ideas. And one of them is the thing she calls the basic package. And KPFA is a basic package. You can, as as Lanier just said, uh, listen to something you don't care for it, stay tuned, you'll come across something you do need. Uh we have basic needs. We have the basic package in KPFA to fill those needs, those information needs, to let you know what you need to know, to protect yourselves, to make yourself and the world a better place, a healthier place. 800-439-5732, kpfa.org. Uh, a pledge or a donation of $100 or more will get you a copy of Sustainable Medicine, Whistleblowing on 21st Century Medical Practice. And it, in a way, KPFA, its entire air is whistleblowing on 20th century practice, 21st century practice. So join us today. Keep the station going. Keep hearing the quality programming, the basic package that keeps you going. 800-439-5732, kpfa.org, sustainable don't, medicine. Don't be complacent. We've, we've expected KPFA to go under for so long and it hasn't. And it has, it hasn't because there are people who are so devoted to the station that they give time and time again. Not everybody can do that. But those of you who have not given, especially those of you who listen to our show who have not given, this is the time to step up. Don't be complacent. This is an experiment. If this goes down during this period in history, we're going to be left in a very dark place with no light on. We're going to have to start over from scratch, creating another community. Don't let it go. 1-800-439-5732, kpfa.org. Donate now. $100 for a thank you gift or any thank you gift on kpfa.org if you prefer. Please donate above what you normally give right now because the station really needs your support and the planet really needs KPFA.
We're just about out of time. I want to also just say thank you to everyone who did pledge during this time. And and thank you to the people who have been so generous over this last 23 years that I've been doing the show. Um, again, it's an honor to be allowed to be on KPFA's uh, uh, air. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a community like no other, and it is fragile in the same way that all communities are. So thank you for joining us today. Visit our website, yourownhealthandfitness.org, for information about this show and almost 700 other shows. Free access to recordings as downloads, a free newsletter about upcoming shows and more. Yourownhealthandfitness.org. Your Own Health and Fitness is produced by Lena Berman and Jeffrey Fawcett. Remember, being informed not only protects your health and the environment, it protects your freedom. And you are listening to KPFA local station board elections are underway and we encourage you to vote. Please look out for your electronic ballot from vote at simplyvoting.com. If you haven't received